Norlington School for Boys, North London. Gaia Passard has been the deputy head for a decade. Uh, thank you. Good report last night? Good. Why not? Over the past four years, he's been applying for headships, but he's found it an uphill struggle. I must, I must have reached the, the, the 50 barrier already, easily, I would have thought. And of those, I've got to four interviews. In the last year, I haven't received any interviews, despite writing what I regard as some fantastic letters. Obviously asked for um, feedback, uh, professional dialogue about strengths and weaknesses that came out of the interview. And I found in all instances when I was uh, having debriefs, I found them all um, lacking in depth and quality. So in terms of using that as a professional de development tool for the next interview, I thought they were in inadequate. In 2002, the University of London set up a leadership programme to help black and minority ethnic leaders, such as Gaia Passard. Leading the scheme is Rosemary Campbell Stevens. I think they're still built in to the system a, a, a sense of superiority, if I can say that, from some white colleagues. And there is always this undercurrent or this feeling that you have to overperform as black professionals. You need to be two times more, three times more, work harder than in order to be seen as um, somebody who is potentially worthy of, of promotion. The year-long course includes a residential weekend to increase self-confidence and develop management skills. I just wondered whether people had any thoughts or any questions they wanted to ask. Because many of us in our schools, we don't have a platform even. Even when you have the ideas like you can't speak, you can't do that, you don't, you're not given the environment to be a part of what is happening. And it really knocks your self-confidence. Absolutely. What I actually found interesting um, was the fact that we're actually listening to each other. You know, you don't actually feel as if you're talking to a blank wall. Um, we, we, we all had ideas, you know, we listened, and you, you thought this person's idea was better than yours. You know, you went with that. So it was like honest um, discussion, and I found that really, really great. Absolutely. And how many of us have had the, the experience where you are talking and you think you're talking to a blank wall? Because <laughs> there's no affirmation, there's no eye contact, there's no head nodding, there's no sort of summary of what's been said, and it's as if, well, your contribution actually, the, the, you know, you know isn't, isn't valued or validated in any way, shape or form. One of the things that we get from, head, from black teachers a lot is the fact that they do not get constructive feedback on how they are progressing as a teacher or in terms of their aspirations for leadership. And one of the things that we find that we have to do quite early on in the programme with very many of our participants is to rebuild their self-confidence build their self-confidence in terms of their capacity to teach, but also build their self-confidence in terms of their capacity to lead others. The, the sort of barriers that I had to achieving the position of deputy head, a lot of it came from within me, um, confidence. Um, initially, um, I lacked a lot of confidence in who I was and what I was doing and the skills that I had. So having people like Rosemary and other close friends who were able to say, yes, Ellie, you can do it, you have got the skills, there are lots of people doing that job who are nowhere near as good as you are, that, that gave me the confidence to actually um, to, to go and to try and to become a deputy head. My intention of becoming a teacher, I could go to five, ten schools, I will still try, I will still keep on. And if I am not successful, there must be a reason. And rather than looking at the outward reason, I look at the inner reason and find some way of getting, of getting beyond that. You see, no matter how people bring up racism as a tool to hold people back, there'll always be ethnic and other minority children in schools. And you need leaders from various, from various groups. During the weekend, the delegates took part in a management simulation and Rosemary is about to announce the winners.
we will give you the name of the team that actually won in terms of the presentation, and that was Roxana's team. Matters, but it's a <laughs> and after the celebrations, the group reflected on the lessons learned. Because I think this was an opportunity for people to face their fears and take on things they hadn't done before. And I think the involvement of everybody doing BIC, no matter how well or how good, because once you've done it, you're going to be able to do it again and do it better. Alternative view, Femi? <laughs> I suppose for me, it's a real understanding of team. And team doesn't mean that everybody has to be good at everything. Once you see something with points, there has to be somebody who has more points than somebody else. Mm -hmm. And if you're in an interview, actually, you've got to come out the best. And therefore, you have to choose things according to that. And I think people can be very emotional, especially our group of people. And I think it's why we lose out quite a lot. We're not hard-nosed enough, we're not hard-edged enough, and we do all this, let's, get, let's all join hands and do it together. <laughs> and I tell you, I tell you, a lot of, uh, in a competitive situation, that cannot work. Luke Burton was a head of science who had to radically change his approach to get promoted. After 16 failed applications for an assistant headship, a colleague gave him some blunt advice. She was saying, Luke, what do you feel that other colleagues think about how you project yourself or whether you think you're, whether you're actually ready for head, deputy headship or senior management or assistant headship? And, yeah, I reflected and I said, OK, yes, I come across as being, you know, um, not so much the life and soul of the party, but certainly someone with a sense of humour, who's willing to have a laugh, um, is, is popular, perhaps. And then she said, does, does that come across, though, as someone who could be a senior manager or a deputy head? Do you think, you know, you come across as someone that could step into and project that role? And uh, on reflection, I could see what she was driving at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There is this fine balance between uh, being flippant and having a sense of humour and actually projecting yourself and actually doing the job at the whole school level. Again, keep moving, please. Thank you. The reason I was successful in the 17th interview was that, uh, one, I was very, very positive and knew that at that point I could take on board any application at senior level that I, was, that I had the skills to do. So, one, I was very, very confident. I had a, a real belief in myself. I knew that I could take students and staff with me as well. Um, I think the other thing is that uh, I was walking in to that institution in role. I was walking in as an assistant head of senior teacher. In fact, I remember talking to the receptionist sometime after, and she said that she knew I was going to get the job because from the moment I walked in and was sitting in reception, I picked up a couple of students who were misbehaving. So already I was in role and, and doing the job, you know. So I was already having a presence at a whole school level. I was acting as a senior manager. Luke moved steadily up the ranks to deputy headship. But after completing the Investing in Diversity programme, he made a bold move and took a year out. And what I did was I actually went sideways and did a secondment with HSBC for a year, working with uh, what is now the HSBC Global Education Trust. I learned to network, something we don't do in schools anywhere near as much, or as often as we should do. I think that's something we're learning in schools, that we need to reach out, meet other people, share good practice. And that was something I was doing for that year at HSBC. And all that during that year enabled me to be very confident about, or more confident about taking on the role of headship. The risk paid off. Last year, on his first application for a headship, Luke was appointed head of Leytonstone Business and Enterprise School. I want you to focus on something during this assembly that you can take away that will help you or assist you in being successful either in your revision on your exams. I just want to share a couple of things with you. The first are some words that I've always found very, very helpful when, I'm, when things get a little bit tough. And it goes as follows. It's all in the state of mind. If you think you're beaten, then you are. If you think you dare not, 
then you don't. If you like to win, but think you can't, it's almost certain that you won't. Because for out in the world, you'll find that success begins with a fellow's will. It's all in the state of mind. And those people that are successful have a very, very positive state of mind. The second thing I wanted to share with you is a major factor in my success. And it's enabled me, for example, to be, okay, to be a head teacher, get my degree, teaching qualifications, be the top chemistry student at school, 100% attendance at school. <laughs> oh, me. This is my baby photo. I'm the beautiful one on the right, okay? And there's my parents there, who are major, major factors in my success. Because they always, and I, I appreciate I'm very, very fortunate, they always set me extremely high expectations. I'd come second in a competition or in a test, and Dad would say, why weren't you first? But, so they had very high expectations, but they're also very, very supportive and always there for me. And I appreciate not all of us are that fortunate. But it is important you've got support. It is important that you have high expectations. Luke carefully chose the school to match his skills and experience and put in a huge amount of background work. I can remember doing lots of practicing in front of mirrors with my interview questions, practicing in front of my wife till she was bored silly and getting upset with me. But um, you do have to, just like in any other situation, any other competition, any other phase of life, if you want to do well, you've got to rehearse it, you've got to practice it. I do recognize that I developed as a person. It was hard, but if I look back now, I was a very different person by the end of it to when I first started applying for senior management positions. And I was certainly very, very capable when I finally did get my position in comparison to when I first started. Uh, good morning, ladies and gents. Unfortunately, it's a miserable day, but I'm sure it'll change, it'll change. Can I thank all staff for their efforts and work this term, particularly in managing the behavior of students? On very ambitious black teachers like, like Luke are getting headships but their options are often limited to challenging schools in inner cities. Many black teachers will want to serve their careers there. They will see it as part of their moral purpose. But what it then means is that it presents a huge range of challenges in terms of them leading those schools successfully. I think one of the other things is that in our quest for getting more black teachers into leadership positions, are we also thinking about how they, they will lead differently? That's very, very important. It's not just about getting more black faces. It's about what is the additionality that they bring to leadership. We're all role models. Whether you're white, black, Asian, whatever, we're all role models. And the fact of the matter is, you know, very clearly, black, for me, I am a, a role model for black and African Caribbean students. For people going forward to be head teachers, the game is raised. The spotlight is on. Black teachers who, who want to get on have to be not just better than their peers, but significantly better.